Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover a audio visualizer in JavaScript and Rails using active storage. One of my friends the other day was asking about creating an audio visualizer. I don't really have any experience doing it, so I thought I would look into a library to do it just to see how difficult it is for someone with uh, very little experience. And this one's actually not that bad. So with a couple lines of code, you can actually get something pretty interesting here. I had to uh, turn down the volume just to make sure that I don't play anything that might get me demonetized. Uh, but if you visit this website, I'll have a link to it in the video description. You can click through the options and see the different presets they have. So these are like the, the animations, and then you can see what they look like when you put them together with some of the custom options. Might be cool for like a podcast or something similar. So to actually use this, we're gonna have to go over to the FUBAR 404 Wave GitHub page to get the package that we're gonna be using for this, because of course we're not gonna code this up ourselves. That would be far too much work. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a new Rails app. So say Rails new, I'll call it video, and we'll use ES build for this. So we're gonna use the dash J ES build. Uh, because I tried using the import maps and for some reason they weren't working again to the surprise of no one, they, they never seem to work. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be using ES build. We'll have to import this. And then the actual setup here is pretty much like four lines of code from the audio visualizer side of things. Uh, the hardest part is just gonna be like actually storing the files with active storage, but we can walk through that real quick. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and generate our scaffold for the audio files. I guess we can call them like audio, maybe audios uh, or sounds maybe, something like that. And then we can give them a name and maybe a description of type text if we're so inclined. We can then go ahead and generate our stimulus controller, which we'll call, uh, I don't know, like wave. That's just gonna be for the actual JavaScript so that we can keep it in a neat place. And then of course, with the, uh, the sounds here, we need to give these a way to store the files. And for that, we'll use active storage. So we'll say rails active underscore storage, colon install, and that'll install the file management for us. We can then do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate our database, set it up for us which will create our sounds table so we can store those, and then it'll create the blobs to actually store the files. Once all of that's done, we can go ahead and open up VS Code using code dot so that we can actually look at this monstrosity that we're about to create. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Plus a couple times to zoom in, and then we can hit F11 to full screen. So to get started, we're gonna have to come into our gem file, scroll down to the bottom because I'm still on Ruby 3.2 and I still don't have a version of form in the works. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in here. Now, once that's in, we then come over to our terminal and run a bundle install command to install this form and gem, and that should work. Next step is to come into config and routes.rb because we want a home page. So we'll just set the home page to be the uh, root for the sounds controller, and then the index action, which is the page that shows us all of our sounds. We can then come up to our app and our models and our sound model, and we need to give this the uh, ability to actually store those audio files. So for that, we'll say this has one attached and we'll call it, uh, let's just call it a file so it's a bit more clear what it is. So it has one attached file. We can then come into our controllers and our sounds controller. So when we create a new sound, we now need to tell it that it does in fact have a file that it should accept here or that it should permit. And that'll set that up for us. So that is the back end handled, the middle end handled. Now let's go do the front end so we can actually upload this. Uh, to do that, we're going to come into our views and our sounds, we'll come into our form, and we can just copy this description here, and we'll change it from a text area to a file field, and from description to file, because that's what we called it in our sound.rb file and in our controller. So we want all of those to match up. So that gives us the ability to actually upload a file. Now, how do we like show it and, and use it? For that, we can come into our sound partial here, which just has our name and our description right now. And if we actually go ahead and let's uh, let's start our server. So let me close out my console here and go over to localhost port 3000. If we run a bin slash dev, that will start our server. We can then go over to uh, localhost port 3000. That'll take us to the root of our application. We can now click on new sound, give it a name, give it a description. For the name, oops, for the name, we'll just do test. For the description, we'll say case, just so we have some words there, and then we can choose a file. And for this, I usually end up using 
the uh, the quick little seven minute f uh, video file, but I think there's actually a better file we can use. Grab the Peaches uh, sound file, because I have permission to use that. So that takes us to the sounds page. Now we want to actually like have the play button for this audio, right? So for that, we can use a uh, audio tag. So let's go ahead and let's full screen this. And then inside of our partial here, we want to create a audio tag. So we'll say P for the file. That gives us the file, right? So if we refresh, that'll give us this weird nonsense here. If we want to get the URL for it, we can just type URL for, and then put this inside of parentheses, save that, refresh. That gives us the URL. And now if we want to change this to an audio tag, we just have to tell it this is an audio underscore tag. And then we wrap all of this inside of parentheses. Now this still isn't going to work for the same reason that a video tag doesn't work here. And that is if we actually open up our inspector and click on this and we come into this P tag and this audio tag, for some strange reason, you need to tell this to have some actual controls. Otherwise it doesn't work. And you can even just type controls in here and that'll effectively do what you need it to. So what we're going to do in here is we're just going to say this has controls colon true. And now if we save this and we refresh, you can see the controls appear here and you can see right here, our audio tag, if I scroll in a bit, has controls equal to controls, which allows it to, to be played here. So now we can click play on this. Uh, and it'll be really loud and I'm going deaf, uh, but you get the idea. So that works. Now let's do the actual audio visualization. For that we're gonna use the FUBAR 404 and we can follow the steps here. It tells us to do a NPMI. Of course, we're using yarn. So we're gonna stop this. We're gonna do a yarn add and then whatever it tells us right here, which is at FUBAR 404 slash wave. Go ahead and run that. That'll add it to our package.json file, which we get because we're using ES build. So you can see right here, FUBAR 404, pretty cool. And then we can go ahead and run a bin slash dev again to start up our server. We can come over here and let's move this back over. We can see that there is nothing happening yet. And that's just because we haven't actually created the uh, logic for using this, this audio file. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually just copy and paste this little bit right here after the controls. So what we're doing is we're saying after the controls, we're giving it an ID. Uh, and of course we can also use like a stimulus uh, target here, but honestly, I'm just not feeling that today. So we're gonna do it with IDs. We give it an ID of wave audio, some data. This has to correlate to the JavaScript controller we generated earlier, which in our case was a wave controller. So that's why it has wave right here as the controller name. And then we give it a wave underscore URL because it's called the wave controller. So we have to put that in the front of it. And then the URL is just that URL that we created earlier. So that's going to allow us to tell the JavaScript file here that it needs to uh, actually access that URL. So let's just real quick check that our stimulus controller is connected just by running a console log hello stimulus that should appear in here as soon as we refresh the page. But of course, we're running into some issues because it's trying to access a audio file and we called them a sound here. So let's change this to a sound file and then refresh. And now we can see hello stimulus is printing out to the console with our audio controls. So let's come back into our wave controller here and let's get both the wave audio and the wave canvas. So if we come over to our sound. We have the wave audio, but we don't have a wave canvas yet. Now the wave canvas isn't terribly difficult. It's just a empty HTML canvas. This is where it's actually going to put the sound animation. So you can put this wherever you'd want to. I just put it below the actual file here. Uh, but it really doesn't matter where you put this as long as it's on the same page. So if we do that, we can come over here and refresh. You'll see that uh, we have the little canvas here that appeared. It's like taking up some space, but there's nothing in it yet. And that's because we've only uh, created them. We haven't actually told them what they need to do. So now let's go ahead and let's create a wave. You can do that by saying let wave equal new wave. And of course, this wave right here is coming from that package we just imp or we just added. So we need to import wave from that foobar 404 slash wave that we added. So that gives us access to the wave object. We can then say, or the wave class, we can then create a new instance of that class with the new wave, pass in the audio and the canvas so that it knows what each is. And then from this point on, we can do pretty much whatever we would like. We can come down here we can say wave dot add, oops, add animation. And we'll just try to add a basic animation here. Uh, maybe we do something like this and we say this needs a new wave dot animations dot wave. I think is how we do this. 
And then in here, we can tell it whatever we'd like. We can give it a color, a line width, and a speed, and a uh, line color, which we'll set to, uh, let's do something like 00FF00, because it's RGB, so that should be a green line. Go ahead and save that, refresh, see if I broke anything. Doesn't look like I broke anything, so let's uh, turn the volume down a little bit so I can keep my hearing. Click play, there we go. It might have just been a little bit too quiet, so now we can see that it is popping up like that. We get the, the color here, which is set to red, and the line color, which is set to green. So let's now uh, take this and let's see what else we can do. So we can actually combine multiple animations. If we just get rid of this, I'll comment this out, and we can add in a wave animation right here for a square, which has a count and a diameter, and one for a glob, which actually has a gradient and a rotation. And then if we run these two, we can then refresh. We can move down the volume again, press play, go to the middle. You can see we get our little glob in the center. It changes based on what the music's doing. And we get the little audio lines coming out of it for the square pattern right here. Uh, you do have to go through and look at uh, you know the source code here to uh, see how this stuff works uh, because the readme doesn't have everything yet it just has a couple of examples but it's really not that hard to you know go into the source and just take a look at what all the animations are here because you got like the waves the turntables the squares shines etc etc yeah i just thought this was interesting sort of came up because i was talking to one of my friends about uh, doing some audio visualizations and i thought i would share with everyone else so yeah hopefully this was interesting hopefully this was helpful and hopefully i will see you in the next tutorial